So, Mr. Christian, you know, it's great to see that you've highlighted the role of census, you know, for national development and the impact. Because many people see census as just a counting exercise, but they don't really assess that there are key areas that are directly impacted by, you know, counting of the people and, of course, housing as well. So, before we move on to other facets of this, can you just highlight the four pillars of your argument that we can critically uh, talk about them? Well, I have four layers of arguments. Um, um, you know, one I was talking. Uh, my argument is first predicated on one, unaudited systems and processes. Two, mood of the country and possible attacks on NPC officials and enumerators. Three is organizational capacity of the NPC itself. And my last argument, among others, is political pressure from political stakeholders. So these are the four layers of arguments that I have. And that is why I'm insisting that if you look at those arguments and the evidences I used to substantiate those arguments, that you will see that the outcome is almost all, always already predetermined. All right, um, Mr. Christian. Um I mean, there are lots of conversations, you know, around what is happening at the moment, especially with a just concluded election. And, you know, looking at uh, doing a census at this point, uh, which has been postponed to May, lots of questions about, um, you know, we using 896 billion naira, close to a trillion naira, you know, to conduct a census. Don't you think it will be remiss of us to have spent uh, almost half a billion, you know, conducting an election? And we want to spend almost a trillion, you know, to conduct a survey that is, um, you know, um, conduct, um, you know, a population census at this point, especially with the fact that some of the issues that we had at the last election have not been resolved. That is looking at human beings, enumerations, technology, and it feels like we're, we're towing the same line, same process, um, but without first receiving or without first reviewing the problems we went through or the problems we entertain during the election. So it feels like the NPC now is using technology, is using people, and exactly the same format, but nothing has been reviewed. Don't you think it's a very big problem? And, you know, just like your argument, you are also saying we should push uh, it forward. Is this one of the things you also uh, put into consideration? And if you can put this in context in line with the first two pillars of your arguments that you mentioned earlier. Well, let me start from the, um, um, the systems and the processes. The NPC on its official website, by NPC, I mean the Nigerian Population Commission, on its official website, claim that this particular exercise will be different. According to the NPC, and I'm reading from that website, the 2023 census will be Nigeria's first digital census, digital in quotes, census, and will change how census is being conducted in Nigeria. You see, this claim is repeated on their public relations outings, and they have doubled down to insist that this is going to be a digital census, this is going to be a digital census. And we say no progress with your digital census, right? Now, the readiness is in doubt. I don't doubt that they want to digitize the process. What the question should be now, the systems and the processes, they said they have acquired geospatial devices. They said they have acquired PDAs. By the way, these PDAs were supplied by Nigerian uh, uh, Xenos computers. They said they have acquired all those systems. Last two weeks, at the last week at the FEC meeting, they have got additional approval of, I think, 2.9 billion or so to acquire software. Now, if you are getting software for the census, this close to the census, how have we integrated those that software? How have we tested those software? So not just the systems, but the processes, for instance, Let's go back to what happened with INEC and the elections. The assurances they gave you about the IRF, the assurances they gave you about the Beaver, the assurances they gave you about every other thing, almost failed flatly. For instance, if you have a wonderful Beaver's technology, but the password to the Beaver's technology is resided with someone who will have to give it to the polling officers to make their, 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 their to, for instance, upload results. If, for instance, those officials fail to or withhold to give that critical access to the election management officials, then the BIFAS is not working. So if you're going to interact, interrogate the BIFAS, you're going to ask who has access to these passwords and what is the protocol around the passwords. So with the census exercise, the PDAs that you have acquired, the geospatial devices that you've acquired, the wonderful things you've been advised and, and you know, talking to us about these systems, what is the process around them? Can an NPC official whether held at gunpoint or whether held, you know, uh, 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 induced by other means, be willing to compromise or sabotage the systems to give inaccurate demographic data. 
And I'll give you this instance, for instance. NPC is going to be hiring close to 500,000 enumerators, right? And these are ad hoc staff of the NPC who are going to be deployed across all the just, uh, you know, land spaces within the, country, uh, the territory called Nigeria. Now, these individuals are going to have some form of autonomy over the system, some form of autonomy over the processes. And where those systems and processes are open to manipulation, for instance, intentional shutting down of the server, for instance, intentional delaying of uploading results, for instance, then you are going to have to critique the whole processes to be sure that those individuals, that their autonomies, their biases are not able to affect the outcome of the census when you are dealing with data and when you have a data that bias of the enumerators can can impact then the data is not going to be credible so in this particular census exercise we have known that political actors are hell-bent on insisting because i mentioned to you that nigeria's resources are continued to be shared based on numbers and nigeria's election are continued to be predicated based on numbers so there are actors who have the motivation to sustain their numbers whether fake or real and they have in my estimation, the capacity to influence people within the system to so what I'm looking at, those systems and the processes that the counting and the enumeration will be done with, is it foolproof? If it is foolproof, fine. If it is not foolproof, then why are we wasting our time? Why are we wasting taxpayers' money working into the elections or census exercises that can be compromised based on the systems and the processes? And that is just one of the arguments. So now I want to come to, on, on, you said something in some of the, the four base points you mentioned, but I want to ask something, still in line with methodology. Do you think that, you know, some of the digitalization, the ways you want to digitalize it, you, that you can stand to fault it, as you mentioned, you cited the fact that, you know, uh, INEC adopted uh, the BVAS and the IRF portal. Now, what ways are you basing your, you know, assessment of the digitalization and the medium they want to digitalize the you know the census before talking to you late last night i spoke again to a professor of computer uh, sciences her special oh sorry doctor of computer science her specialty is on human interaction with systems she consults with several institutions i won't give away where she works but she teaches mm. at one of the leading universities around the world. And I said, walk me through the process. And she says, when you are designing a system, you're going to design a system with why? What is the system going to be doing? Okay. And when we have identified what the system will help us do, in this particular instance, we have decided design a system that will help us to count all eligible Nigerians. And we help us capture all demographic data we are measuring, whether we're measuring this, the number of family size, whether we're measuring fertility rates, whether we're measuring mortality rates, whether you know all the key demographics that we're going to be measuring with this census. We have to we have designed according to MP a system that will help us to count these people. And then the next layer is to conduct integrity tests on those systems. You don't just come out from the lab and go straight to the market. No way. You have to conduct what is called integrity tests. Who are the key stakeholders who this census exercise will, be con uh, will affect? Most likely, you're going to be talking about the governors. Mm. Most likely, you're going to be talking about the, the political actors. Most likely, you're going to be talking about Nigerians in their clusters, maybe represented through organizations like Arewa Consultative Forum, uh, Northern Elders Forum, Ohane Zendibo, Afeni Fere, and other social cultural groups. You may also be talking about traditional institutions, the, the chiefs, the traditional title holders, the Igwe, the Balis. You might also be talking about the religious institutions, the um, is a Christian Association of Nigeria, and then the other end. So you're going to bring all the stakeholders and say to them, this is a system we have designed to achieve this purpose. And then before them, you demonstrate that that system is indeed able to achieve that purpose. If you have conducted acquired beavers or whatever technology, in this case for MPC, and you say that it's going to help us to achieve credible census. Now you you have to come back to us, to Nigerians, to say this is the system we have acquired, and these are the processes. Then we subject the systems to stress test. Can this system be manipulated? We try to manipulate it, and if it can, we reject it, and you insist that you iterate it further until it's beyond manipulation. Mm. We have to understand the processes. We have to, you know, so you don't just bring from the lab and on the market. You have to do what is called integrity test. But in most of the instances, Nigerians don't ask questions. Nigerians are reactive. I'm telling you about, you know, I warn Nigerians about walking into the elections with unaudited systems and processes. They didn't listen. And today, everybody's crying, including the political actors. And I made those arguments to them. Today, I'm repeating this argument. If you walk into a census exercise with unaudited systems and processes, if you're saying that this system is digitized, no problems. Let us test them. 
Who has tested it? Who was there when you tested it? You don't just tell us about the system. We want to see so that we believe you. Now, the elections is even better than the census, if you look at our laws. Because mm. if you feel aggrieved about the elections, you have judicial systems of redress. You can go to the election petition tribunal, you can go to the Supreme Court, you can go to the appeal court, you can go to even pre-election processes, you can challenge that in court. Unfortunately for the census, you don't have any legal window of redress. redress. Mm. The only person that needs to accept the census is the president. Once he accepts the census, the law forbids you as a Nigerian to make further impact. So any input you're going to make about the census is going to happen before the census. Mm. If you can't do anything before the census, then it is foreclosed. So if we cannot audit the systems before the census, even if they turn out numbers, once the president accepts those numbers, it is not the miss for anybody. I mean, you just, you just expanded um, what we need to be asking. One mm. of the questions we need to be asking um, about how do we ensure that technology does not fail us? I think that's one of the questions a lot of Nigerians should be asking yet again at this point. But now... Looking at the fact that we as a country, we have this too many database. I mean, we have the driver's license, we have the NIN, mm -hmm. we have the BVN. We have all these databases that don't seem to interact with each other. And one would ask a question saying, well, now we want to add census, the census database. <laughs> and one would ask, um, how exactly do we consolidate all of this so as to, you know, all this added to the census process? Because... We're just having databases that we are not using. But now we're also using 896 billion yet again to conduct another census. How, what are your thoughts on this? Well, what, what we argue is also for that cr cross-platform integration where we can harmonize our databases, where we can harmonize the NOBAN, the BVN, the NIN, and all of those other you know, identity cards, um, 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 voters cards, uh, driver's license, uh, NIN numbers. So you can integrate that. That's even immigration and, and you know, immigration, um, they have database at the NPC. Even the police have records. So there are disparate records scattered all around. So you have a different argument about designing a system that can integrate all this. Now, I don't have the confidence that those systems have been integrated as at this point. That is number one. So you have another build up of data. And we have issues around data, around data security, around data management, uh, because that's a different argument. But let me go to the second point I have here, really, mm. because I'm looking at mood of the country. Nigeria is currently tensed from fuel scarcity to naira scarcity before the elections to an unacceptable electoral outcome to the top judicial top of view of people not having confidence in the judiciary again to the election petition tribunal. Take, for instance, when you go to Lagos, the people you stopped from voting you flogged away from their polling units. You attacked from their polling units just a few weeks ago in Lagos. And then tomorrow you are going to knock on their doors to say you are going to count them as residents of Lagos State. You know, close your eyes a bit and imagine what it will look like. Nigeria is tensed. Take another example. An average father who is unable to feed his children. He can't buy petrol. He can't buy bread. He can't sell his goods to, because of the economic situation and everybody is angry with the general conduct of the elections not as exactly on who won but the processes if the person who won won fair and square nigerians will not be in this mess but now you have that father sitting in anger unable to buy petrol unable to acquire money even bank transfers difficulties with with affecting bank transfers and someone knocks on his door and says oh we are here to conduct census how many kids do you have how many toilets do you have do you have do you eat three square meals a day i mean just imagine Nigeria has a lot of ungoverned spaces, whether you're talking about the south, east, the north, east, the northwest, a lot of the middle belt, a lot of insecurity. The nation is tensed up. And I'm making the argument that if NPC goes on to deploy its officials, it will be sending those officials in harm's way because a lot of Nigerians are angry. And you don't have to be a behavioral scientist to be sure that more than likely some people might want to take out this anger on any symbol of state authority, in this case, enumerators. MPC has said in its argument, oh no, you know the way we're trying to work around that is that we have provided that every enumerator we're going to use is going to source, we're going to source our enumerators from that local government area. But we have seen Boko Haram kill people from their host regions. We have seen unknown government abduct people even within the locality that they are coming from. So that you are bringing, for instance, someone from Newe North to conduct census in Newe North does not mean that that person is immune to anger of Newe people. If you're going to bring someone from Okota to conduct census in Okota, that does not mean that that person, because he or she is from Okota, is immune to anger from people from Okota. If you're going to send people to maybe say 
places around Sambisa or some of those places where you know are ungoverned today. And because they are from those places, does not preclude them from being attacked by people. So we're saying to the country, the mood is tense at this time. Allow things to simmer down a bit before you go into another census exercise. Nigerians cannot afford two heartbreaks. The heartbreak of Naira scarcity, the heartbreak of uh, fuel scarcity, the heartbreak of inflation, the heartbreak of a failed, completely failed election systems and processes. And then you're going to add another heartbreak of potential. And historically, no census in Nigeria has been accepted generally. So you're talking about a historical perspective now that no census have been accepted, accepted. And the build up to this suggests to us that this one will not be accepted. So why are we walking into this census? Why are we trudging on? Why can't we wait for the swearing in to happen? Why can't we wait for the new government to form? Why can't we wait for, you know, my argument is that we should extend this census by nine months. And in nine, nine months, the Ohanes and the, the Pandev, are a consultative forum, all of the actors, the not go, um, uh, Southeast Governors Forum, the New Belt Governors Forum, you know, all the forums around, including the Christian Association of Nigerians, should nominate their representatives to query the systems and the processes around the NPC to be sure that those systems are further improved. I like the systems, but my argument is that they be further improved. Okay. I mean, we have to be designed. But let us further improve before deployment. Okay. That is the second argument. Let me talk about the organizational capacity of the NPC. Okay. All right. And that before, like in line with this, you can just sum up your third and fourth arguments. Then we can proceed to critically analyzing them. Go ahead, Mr. Chima. Yes, please. Now, the most critical aspect is not even the systems and the processes to me. It mm. is the organizational capacity of NPC. Like most institutions in Nigeria, the recruitment, reward, command, and control structure within the NPC has made it difficult for that organization to hire and retain talents. Even when talented people show up on the scene, the dominant culture within the establishment makes them to pander more to the rank a day day and to the so people don't speak up within the organization. And then all you have to do is to look at even the constitution that sets up the, the NPC. Go to section 213 of Nigeria's constitution. Mm -hmm. And let me quickly run them down by you. Any report of the NPC containing the consensus figures shall be delivered to the president by the chairman of the commission. The president shall, within a period of 30 days after receipt of the re report, lay copies of reports before the Council of State, who shall consider and advise the president on whether to accept or reject it. Where the Council of State ad advises the president to accept the reports, the president shall merely then lay the report on the table of the two houses of the National Assembly. Then where the president accepts such report and has laid it on the table of the National Assembly, then he shall publish it as an official gazette of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Once it is published, it becomes an official document. Where the Council of State advises the president to reject it upon the ground that the population census is contained inaccurate reports, that the census report is perverse, the president shall reject it accordingly and no reliance whatsoever shall be placed upon such reports. Now, leave section 213 of Nigeria's constitution and now go to the NPC Act. The NPC Act, the composition of the NPC states the commission shall comprise part one, the, you know, part one of the NPC Act of 1989 that the commission shall comprise of the following members, chairman and one person from each of the 36 states of the federation uh, and uh, FCT, who shall be one appointed by the president, appointed by the president. So the president appointed 37 commissioners of, INA, of NPC. Okay, just, so just, to, just to interject there, Mr. Chima, a, a bit, um, in the bit, still talking about the organization, I want to talk about security and the fact that you mentioned that the commission has to, uh, wants to adopt, you know, you know, staffs that work from their different local government. Now, does it mean that even in employing the staff from the different local government that there, you know, there's no plan for the security of the people who will be manning some of this operation? And then, what is the commission, you know, the, the MPC doing to also stop some, you know, non-state actors to, you know, to interfere in the process? We have just, um, um, I've forgotten the exact numbers now, but I think um, we have, I can't remember the exact number of polling units we have in Nigeria. But you could see that the police and the military resources that were drafted into the election exercise had issues protecting all the, for instance, in Lagos, you had 13,000 polling units in Lagos. And on the governorship election day, the police could not protect the 13,000 polling units. Now, when you are talking about enumerators, they are supposed to go to every single house. 
So this is not you gather at this pulling unit or you gather at your ward or you gather at a place. Every single house. How are you going to provide security at a cheese to every single enumerator walking around? And the exercise is going to be held for like a day, a week. A week. Mm. So which means that simultaneously you are deploying about 700,000 people to be walking around all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria to conduct this exercise. Even if you want to attach three policemen to each of the units that will be, and the Nigeria does not simply have the capacity. If you want to attach mm. units to army, Nigeria does not have the capacity. This is on state capacity, right? Now, let me go back to the argument about um, an inherent capacity within the NPC. Because what you're going to see is that due to lack of use, the NPC had not conducted any major exercises since 2006. So due to the lack of use, that organization has a bit atrophied. And they have done some work, some minimal work, but the organization has not deployed full capacity. So what Nigeria is about to do is to go on a long trip with a vehicle that has been packed for 17 years. And nobody is asking whether this vehicle has been serviced well or Mr. not. Mr. Kirsten. The NPC claims that he has trained Yeah. Yes, please. Sorry. In line with lack of, um, you know, um, the citizens asking questions, one of the things that has been on people's minds, especially after the last experience we had with INEC, was the fact that INEC did in fact, um, INEC was giving half a billion to conduct an election, which they had four years to prepare for. And now we have, we're trying to conduct a census exercise that we haven't done in a number of years, since 2006. How exactly do we hold them accountable to this 896 billion that we plan to spend to conduct the census exercise? Yes, I mean, I, I, Talking about your four layer, the four layers that you have rightly mentioned, I mean, those mm -hmm. facts are very valid. But now let's talk about the budgets and let's talk about how Nigerians can make sure that, how do we ensure that they do what they're supposed to do with the money and in fact hold them accountable? Governance, especially in democracy, is not self a la carte. It's a demand and supply kind of thing. If Nigerians don't demand for a credible census, believe me, a credible census will not be supplied. One of the key issues to hold them accountable is this. If you say you have systems and processes, let all the stakeholders come and audit the systems and processes and give them a pass mark. That's number one. Once you go through the process of auditing the systems and insisting on integrity tests, the systems where they have flaws will be suggested improvements. And once those improvements are made, you can have confidence on the systems. Same with the processes. Two, if the MPC, who has not worked as an organization, has not deployed fully for 17 years, is about to deploy, and they tell you that they have done trainings, we need to send in people to monitor the training exercises. I have interviewed with some of the you know, enumerators, supposed enumerators. I've interviewed people who are working with the system. I can tell you this for free, that even the, the several layers of trainings that they were supposed to do had been further postponed. Each of the you know, systems postponed. So it is more than likely that if you allow this organization, they would have trained staff, right? So if they are going to be doing training, we need to see the full layer of the trainings you are going to give these people. Everybody gets full layers of trainings. And then we need to send representatives to monitor those training exercises and give accurate reports, including from the media. Because what happens is that people appropriate money for trainings, and those trainings don't happen, but people retire those monies, and then you send out on some people. So if you're going to do training, as a way to revive the organizational capacity within the system, you must be sure that people will audit those trainings. And then one thing we have to call them accountable with is this, that whatever data you are going to release publicly, that you are going to show all workings, Anybody who had done mathematics in primary or secondary school will understand what I mean. You don't just arrive at answers, you show all workings. NPC must be willing to open up its books to scrutiny. If you have conducted census and you say, for instance, Nigerians are 300 million, for instance, no argument. Let us see how Nigerians are 300 million. All right. Million. So, Mr. Christian, in line with this argument, argument, while we try to round this up, let us take a look at your fourth, the fourth pillar of your argument. And also, you raised a very specific timeline, you know, among those pillars. You did say you would like it to be postponed uh, for by nine months. So, why this very specific timeline? In line, yes. So, in line with your argument, Tell us why this is a very specific timeline and also just sum up those arguments for us while we round this up. Yes, the, I, I, I'm looking at nine months because you know we're operating with the 2022 budget. Part of the census exercise is funded by the 2022 budget. And that 2022 budget, as you are aware, had been extended 
to run into the 2023 year so that they can you know finish up the line items on that budget and it was appropriated and approved by the house and the, the, the national assembly so we have to extend by nine months not within the next fiscal year so that we don't drag 2022 expenditure into year 2024 but now you also have to give enough time for the new government to be formed and stabilized for tinubu or whoever becomes the president to appoint his government and stabilize for there to be tried to be a stabilization of the economy and the peace around for there to be a national healing for instance let the nations you know, heal from the process of the elections and the divisive rhetorics we saw from the elections so that is that on that then the committees involved the Southeast Governors Forum, Northeast Governors Forum, and all the entities that I've mentioned before now in this argument will have to nominate people to go and look into what NPC is doing. And for those people to interrogate all those systems and the processes, and for those systems and the processes where they have been found wanting to be further improved. So these processes I have enumerated will take you some time for the new government to be formed, for the economy to at least balance a bit, for the anger in the land to sit down a bit, and for people to interrogate the systems and the processes, these things will take time. And the immediate, in my own, nine months is not even enough. But I'm saying, because of all the considerations, especially around budgeting appropriation, and that these monies have been released, some of these monies, a substantial part of it has been released already. So now that MPC has possession of this money, let us just delay and just for a reasonable time frame for us to make sure that the systems and processes are beyond approach. That All right, so in 45 seconds, Mr. Nigeria Christian, can you just give us your final word on this issue in 45 seconds, please? If you look at the post political pressure that is more than likely to be deployed on the NPC, if you look at the organizational capacity of the NPC, the ad hoc staff of the NPC who appointed them, who appointed them, the governors have impact in them. If you look at the mood of the country, and if you look at unaudited systems and processes, and if you look at several other considerations, the end point is that this exercise is more than likely to have an unacceptable outcome. So I invite Nigerians to use all the platforms available to them to insist that the NPC subjects this, to insist on the federal government to further postpone this, this exercise, and then for all these things we have discussed and more to be factored in before we walk into a major national exercise.